parabola. From now on, when I think of something incredible, I'm just going to say parabola. You know what I mean? Like, why can't I have a new word or a word that's not often used to express something incredible? I could cite many other cliches or words that we often use to express something or exclaim something, even if it's not necessarily what the word means. So this morning, I'm going to say to you, parabola. Look at your neighbor and say, parabola. 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 He gave me this word on this morning, and it had a couple of different meanings, and I'd never even heard the term before. Actually, parabolic action is what he gave me. Parabolic. So I'm going to say parabola. Parabola. You say bola, I say bola. Come on there, remember our deal. A parabolic action is often used as a fishing term, and I'm going to get into this in just a second. A fishing term, a parabolic action. Many of us have been experiencing some things to where your world seems upside down. Upside down. Especially in comparison to what you're seeing is what God is saying, and you know what the destination is, as opposed to where you are. Well, I'm over here. The promise is over here. I know right here that I'm going to get there, but the closer it seems, the further it seems apart. Ah, am I, am I the only one? Okay. So the reference point starts off like this. There's a little bit of a divide, but the closer it gets internally, the more it seems like this. How many people know what I'm speaking of on this morning? But you've gone on the journey far enough to know that when something like that happens, the opposite of what it seems, you know to draw closer to God. So whatever it is that you do, pray or fast, maybe pray and fast, maybe get up at 3 a.m. and pray, maybe get by yourself, solitude, maybe, you know, read the word more. Whatever you do, Whatever you feel led to do in order to get closer to God is what you are drawn to do. It doesn't even seem to be a conscious action at a certain level. It's not even something that you really even have to think about as much as it is something that you just do. You don't even really have a choice at some point. At the same time, it feels good as it feels bad as he's drawing some things and taking the taste out of your mouth for some things and, and separating you a little bit and you feel a little weird, a little discombobulated. A little strange. But the further you walk into the place and the more the two points seem to be separated, there's, a, there's a, a sweet comfort in a strange way. God, it must be an oddball, but I tell you, the more you draw me closer, I think I like the oddity. And the things that I think I need in my brain, the further you draw me into you, the more the things seem separate from what it really is, the better I seem to feel comforted in my spirit. He often says that he's changing things. He often says, trust me, there's some people that have been waiting for a long time for some things. He's been dropping hints along the way and saying very directly, I'm going to manifest the promise for you. I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. But the further you go, the more it seems to be the opposite perspective of what your reality really is. In the book of Revelations, chapter 21, and verse 5, about halfway through verse 5, he says, Behold, I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. Look at your neighbor and say, Behold, I make all things new. Parabola. Parabola. He says he's making it all new. Oh, see, I thought you were with me. Oh, come on, you got to stay with me. So, God, if you're making all things new, and, and, and I'm feeling like the things that are old are stretching in such a direction from the thing that I thought was new, and, and it seems so 
opposite of what it should be, but God, I just say parabola because even if it doesn't seem like it's going to happen the way it should, I've reached a place of comfort and trust in you until it really doesn't matter that much. Ah, come on, walk with me a little bit. See, he'll take you to the place to where it looks like the thing that you thought you were supposed to get is right there, and then he stretches it out, and he stretches a little bit more, and, and he stretches a little bit more until you get to the place to where it doesn't even look like it's going to happen, and then you realize that if it never happens, you're still good. You know what that means? That means parabola. Parabola, God, I, I, I pray that it happens, but really I'm in a place that's so comfortable right now. Just a little twist of the dial and I'd be good for life. It looks so impossible for what I thought it was going to get. I really don't even really need that much anymore or that thing anymore. I just want to just fix the, just fix it just a little bit. God, I'm, I'm kind of tired and kind of weary rest. How many people know what I'm talking about? Amen. 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 Snatch some of that fight out of you. you. Snatch some of the ah fight out of you. I see you, God. See, most of us, we're, we're, we're fighters, so you reach the place in him the way you've been fighting to try to get that thing that he said you were going to get. He, he, he waved, he allowed it to be waved in your face and, and, and instinctively you, you, because most of your overachievers in some area, if not many areas, and, and you, 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 you've been reaching for it. And then the more you, you reach for it, the more it seems to get further away until you just gotten tired of reaching for it. Then you look at yourself and say, Parabola. Parabola. Go with me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 5. Let me set this up for you. This was, Jesus was into his ministry. He had just come from healing Peter's mother, Simon Peter. One of the more colorful disciples, Peter was, I like Peter because he was a little rough. You know, when he first started out, Peter would tell you like it is. He didn't mind, you know. Uh, he, he, was, he just knew where he was coming from. Peter's mother-in-law was sick and Jesus had just prayed for her and she was healed. They'd gone into a place where many, many miracles had been done and and everybody that was sick had been brought to them, is what the Bible says. Not just Jesus, to them, the disciples, with Jesus. They were helping to process the people as they were coming through to be healed, as they were, they were part of the movement of what Jesus was doing at this time. And, and, and the things that he were doing was, was doing was so miraculous until the multitude of people started to hear about it. And they just wanted to be around him. And they wanted a word from him. They just wanted a touch of his miraculous nature. And a crowd sought him out. And he, they were trying to, to keep him there. And he said, I need to go because I need to preach the kingdom of God. I need to go. I need to step further into my ministry. But they were trying to hold him right there in that same spot. And he had been preaching all around Galilee and the synagogues. And verse 1 of chapter 5 says, And so it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. They just wanted a word. They wanted to glean from him. They wanted a, a nugget from heaven. They may not have even been sure who he was, some of them, but they knew that what he was saying was, was, was the word of God, and they knew the miraculous things that were happening as a result of his ministry. They, they wanted some of that. They wanted the word of God. And it says, he went and stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. Now, there were several boats, several shipping, uh, fishing vessels that were on the lake, but there were two in particular that were there. And the fishermen had gone from the boats. They weren't on the boats. They were on the dock washing the nets, washing out the fish nets. 
So Jesus went and got into one of these boats. And it happened to be the boat of Simon Peter, his, one of his disciples, Simon Peter, who had been with him. Simon Peter, who his mother-in-law had just been healed. Simon Peter, who had been with him while he healed all of the sick people. But Simon Peter and his team of fishermen had been out fishing all night long. All night long they'd been fishing. And that was how they made their living. All night long, they'd been fishing and not caught a single fish. Not one. Can you imagine how much fatigue you would have if you worked all night and you didn't make a dime? This is where they were at this time, on this day, at this point in their lives. For them, it must have been perplexing because how is it that I can be with Jesus? How is it I can walk next to him as one of his disciples? How is it I can witness all of the healing miracles? I watched them heal everybody that came in there sick. I watched them heal my mother-in-law, but yet I am not getting anything, God. Why? I'm sure Peter must have asked himself that. He probably didn't want to verbalize it because he didn't want to be disrespectful because they knew who he was. But at some point in his mind, I know he was saying, Parabola! Parabola. Look at your neighbor and say, Parabola. He fished all night long. All night long. And I know they were bone tired. But I will tell you something. There is a place of humility. There's a place of honor. There's a place of appreciation that you get if you've ever worked and not gotten anything for it, but you knew that you were doing what God told you to do. There's a a quiet place of satisfaction. There's a place of joy that most people would not be able to explain. There is a comfort in knowing that you are right where he is telling you to be. And the more it seems the opposite of what it should be, and the more he ministers you to tell you that it will be what you think is going to be and beyond, the more you feel a quiet peace and an internal joy that makes you feel like you're six years old when your little sister was playing, I got a secret. How many people know what I'm talking about in this moment? So Peter was somewhere between that feeling of satisfaction and the feeling of despair. He'd not quite made it to the place of satisfaction and knowing that God was going to be God and God was going to have his way and work it out in his situation. He was still in the place of despair of seeing that, you know what, I've seen all of these miracles and I, and I saw all the things that he did and I know he's the son of the living Christ and in my humanity it doesn't feel right and I'm, and I'm tired and I'm weary and, and, and when do I get mine? They'd fist all night. They'd fished all night. Verse 3 says, Then he got to one of the boats, which was Simon's, and he asked him to pull out from the land. And he sat down. He sat down in the boat or the vessel. He sat down. He, 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 He rested in the boat. And that was the custom of the day for a preacher or a teacher to actually sit down, but also sit down means to to rest. And it says he sat down in the boat, but the literal interpretation could mean that he actually rested in the vessel. Peter was the vessel. You are the vessel. And even if you're feeling a little weary and you know what I'm talking about, that's because God is at rest in you. There's no reason to be weary. All he's doing is setting you up for a moment that you can just say, parabola, parabola. He sat down and he taught the multitudes from the boat or the vessel. So even though the vessel might have been weary, even though it may have looked like the vessel wasn't going to get to where it was supposed to go, even though the vessel wanted to be docked, the vessel was being used as an example for the kingdom. Are you a vessel that's being used? 
even though you feel weary like you've worked all night, you feel like you don't want to go back out? Have you been put in a place to where the enemy has told you in your mind, you know what? I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to fight for it anymore. I'm tired of the fight. I'm tired of working for it. It's too much turbulence. Amen. And then you tell yourself it's the enemy. You know, sometimes the enemy will be allowed to be used by God just to get you in the place that he wants to have you in so that you can say, you know what, God? Amen. Whatever you Amen. say, I just want to be able to say parabola. Amen. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a praise. <laughs> so he taught the multitude, and, and, and he was teaching the multitude from the vessel, which was the fishing vessel, which in this case was owned by Simon. And after, now catch this piece, after Jesus had stopped speaking, after he had stopped speaking to the multitude, after he stopped speaking to the, to the outer court, after he stopped speaking to the masses, then he gave him his own private message, Amen. his own special message, his intimacy. Once he stopped seeing it from the first dimension, because it wasn't that Jesus stopped speaking in the first dimension. It was that Peter had to get to the place to where he wasn't hearing him in the first dimension. He had to get to the, or hearing what was going on in the first dimension. He had to get to the place where he could hear him to hear the small, still voice, to get his divine instruction so that he could walk into his moment of parabola. <laughs> Amen? See, he had to be allowed to fish all night. He had to be allowed to try to do it on his own. He had to be allowed to get to the place to where he was tired and weary. He had to be allowed to get to the place where he'd worn himself out trying to do it his way, to where he got to the place to where he wasn't listening anymore to what it looked like or what it should look like in the first dimension. All he could do was to hear what God was saying to him. Come on and give a Lord a praise. Simon answered because God, what God told him, what Jesus told him to do after he stopped listening to the first dimension, what he told him to do was to, to launch out in the deep, to launch out in the deep. God, I've already been out there and I've already walked by faith and I've already done this a thousand times and I've already trusted you so many times and why do I have to go back out there and I've been doing it so long and I've been doing it this way and I haven't yielded anything. I haven't caught a single fish. Amen. This is what Simon was saying to himself and he was, he was really saying it to Jesus, but he had to, uh, Jesus had to allow him to have all of that negative nonsense come out so that he could get to what was in the core. That's right. Amen. So he could get to what was in the core, which was his anointing his intimacy, his trust, his, his knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding, all of the things that God had put in him because God had already been so much in him until he was sitting down. He was already at rest waiting for you to hear what's in here instead of looking at what's out here. <laughs> Amen. He told him to launch out into the deep. Go ahead and walk out there by faith. I know you've been fishing all night. I know you've done it a thousand times. I know that you haven't yielded anything. I know that you had to get to the place to where you were tired of trying it your way. But now I want you to get the divine instruction. The divine instruction. The divine instruction. This was the parabolic action. A parabolic action would be God, it looks like this, and you showed me this, and you have me resting right here. So this edge versus this edge, how in the world am I going to get from here to here? You can't. We can't. And that's why it looks so far apart is because we try to do everything that we can, and the more we do, the more it seems to go further apart. Two things have to happen. First, you have to get a divine instruction. You have to move quickly and precisely. 
the divine instruction as it comes from the realm of the heavenly into the atmosphere, moved on by you, as it brings it into the first dimension, it comes in one side of the parabolic action, one side of the curve, and the gravity forces it down so that when you go down like this, whoosh, it comes out the other side. So what it's doing is it's taking this side and joining it with this side with one very smooth action, fueled by the divine instruction, weighted by the gravity coming into the first dimension, fueled by the miraculous nature of Jesus the Christ. Give the Lord a praise right there. Parabola. Parabola. It's a parabolic action. Okay, well, God, I got that. But still, I need to understand it a little bit more. He told Simon to go back in the deep. God, you want me to go back by faith in the deep? I'm tired. I thought I was past this. I saw that it didn't yield anything. And I don't know what deep action he's telling you to do or what you've been through or what you're tired of, because I'm sure they were tired. They probably didn't want to see no fish or a boat or water or anything for a long time. He said, go back into the deep and let down your nets. Your nets for a catch. Simon said, no, master, we, we, we toiled all night. And we caught nothing and blah, 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 blah. Comma, he didn't put a period. But nevertheless, at your word, I will let the net down. I believe he took a deep breath, a deep breath. He inhaled. <sighs> exhaled. And said, at your word. In other words, what do you say, God? And many times we've done so many things and we've done everything that we can and we don't wore ourselves out and we, we, in our intellect, we never even stop to think and say, what do you say? What's, what's your word, God? A lot of times when we're praying and we're asking and we're fasting, it's about what we want, our will, and what we think it should be and how we thought it should be. You had to, he had to get you to the point to where it's not about what you want, think, feel, smell, heard in your own intellect. Got you to the point to where it's, what do you say? I'm not going to do anything else, God. I'm just going to be still and let you be God. I'm not going to do anything, God, unless you specifically tell me. And even when you tell me, God, I want it to be you, and I want to make sure it's you, and I want it to be a precise and divine instruction, and I want you to make it so clear that even a six-year-old would get it. Amen. At your word, God, what do you say? Because I want it to be parabola. Amen? He said, at your word, I will let the net down. And when they had done this, I want you to catch this piece because the first meaning of a parabolic action is a fishing term, meaning that it would be a slow uh, bending movement. And that's the way we think about our acts of faith and the way things should, tr should transition. We think that God has to take a long time to bless us and, and that he, it's like he has to work it out. God has always been God. He's always will be God. He owns everything. He has access to everything. What he is waiting for us to do is to merely catch up so that we can receive what he has for us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So it's not that it's a slow moving action. It's really quick. It's a projectile. The word and the power of the miraculous divine instruction is a projectile to shoot you from one edge of the parabola to the other edge of the parabolic action. But you have to be in place to hear. Amen. What do you say, God? He gave him one instruction. He told him where to place the net. Where to place the net. And these men who had fished all night, and I'm sure they were feeling broken, beat down, and weary in one movement. One movement. And the word says, verse 6, and when they had done this, when they got the divine instruction and knew where to place the net, they caught so many, a great number of fish, so many that their net was breaking. So many fish that the net was breaking. And they came and filled both boats so much until they began to sink. That many large fish 
change their whole life. Amen? Oh, come on, give the Lord a praise. So I know that many of us as his disciples have been waiting for divine action. I know many of us have been waiting for him to manifest this great thing. And we've been working toward it and toiling toward it. And we got to the place to where, you know what, God, it just doesn't look like it. I'm sick of thinking about it. I'm just going to stay right here and hide myself. And what he's saying is he had to get you to the place to where it was no longer you acting in what you thought was faith. The fact that you have faith is what has gotten you to this place. Now it's no longer a faith action as much as it is a faith attitude to just sit and wait and ask him to bless you with what he says to do. What do you say, God? At your word, I just want to place the net one more time. I just want to place it one more again so that I can get all that I need to get so that I can transition into the next dimension. I want to be in my parabolic moment. So I say to you in closing on this morning, listen to what he's saying to you right now. See the new thing that he's doing. Ask him to help you be still so you can receive the divine instruction. And then you can say, praise God, parabola. Amen. Give the Lord a praise.